Get out of your cooking rut this fall. Every Plate provides plenty of delicious variety with 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week. Get $1.49 per meal with code junkyardpod at everyplate.com slash podcast. Yay, networks. For me, though, I feel like even the most horrific things that I've been through, mm-hmm. I still want to remember them. Yeah. Like they help you grow and get better. Yeah. Wow, that was deep and profound. So deep of you. On the road again. Oh boy. On the road. I realize I don't know that song. I know that like on the road again. That's all I know too. We're on the road. Yes, we are. We're on our way to LA. The seemingly never ending road to LA. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's a long drive. I know. Four four full days. One of them is like a 10-hour day. We're somewhere in the middle of Minnesota and Los Angeles. Wow. I've that lost was... chat of <laughs> space and time. Yeah. I think we're in the mountains. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The air feels very Mountain-y? thin. <laughs> yeah. Shane kept saying that he had, was having altitude sickness. What were you doing where you were like, it must be the altitude? Oh, you were just like out of breath drinking your milkshake or whatever. You were like, it must be altitude. I looked, we were at like 2,000 feet. You know what? For someone with limited lung capacity. That makes a difference. Every foot matters. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, we have a little uh, janky setup here. We do. Because we're on the road and we're just trying to get this done when it needs to be done. Yep. So pardon any jankiness. Yeah, it's not our normal, like the pizzazz of our filming area at home is just not here oh this will have pizzazz but it'll be coming in the form of our facial expressions (laughs) and for people listening voice changes (laughs) (laughs) all right Hannah what are we doing today all right first we're going to talk about what Shane eats in a day kind of a thing like what Shane eats because when we talked about how he has worked to gain weight and how that's been successful we got some questions about like what What does Shane eat? What can he eat? What does he like to eat? How much does he eat? Like, you know, all that stuff. We were thinking it might be, you know, interesting to you because I am a 31-year-old that weighs 60 pounds around there, you know? So it might be peculiar to you what I eat in the day, even though it's normal to me. So we're going to run through that and then... Then we're going to do... And am I the asshole from Reddit? Yeah, we've been having a lot of fun reading all your, you know, your opinions about these am I the asshole things. Yeah. Everyone always sides with Hannah. Thank you. Like, by and large. Really? Yeah. So hopefully I can, hopefully we have different opinions about this one. Yeah. And hopefully I can redeem myself. Did you pick one that was like tricky? I picked the first one that I saw. okay. (laughs) You know me, Hannah. Very little. Yeah, that's that's (laughs) Shane for every single thing. And then we're going to end with some funny would you rather questions because we want this to be fun yeah. and lighthearted and we're on the road yes we've got nothing serious today <laughs> all right I guess your diet is a little serious my diet is very serious Should we dive into what you eat shane what do you eat for breakfast let's go hour by hour ah let me just get the, the, the spirit here ah, i'm waking <laughs> up oh my opening my eyes <laughs> <laughs> stretching out my limbs oh nope they don't move oh. uh, i come out to the kitchen where the absolute, like, every single day similarity, I don't know what I'm saying here, the thing that I have every single day of my life is a cup of coffee. That's pretty normal, To begin my day. That's pretty normal. But, like, the meals fluctuate. Yes. My coffee never fluctuates. That's the same for a lot of people, but that's great to know. Shane likes coffee. I typically have one cup of caffeinated Coffee. I'm gonna get real specific here. Two two big spoonfuls of sugar. Well, I bet that is and milk. How how big is a big spoonful? Like not a teaspoon, okay. like a regular spoon from our kitchen right. that would be used for rice. So I have that, and I typically don't finish the whole cup. Like oh God. I'm just being specific. De- the detail. Look at my cup over there. There is a good half. one fourth of it. Half. half left. You didn't oh, drink well, it. Well, I'm not done yet. Oh my God. I have that. This is going to be real specific, guys. Then for breakfast, Shane will eat usually leftovers from dinner the night before. But I'm going to give a mouse. Like I, I that, so that yes. for me is very different than you. That's true. So 
let's say I'm having a leftover burrito, Mm -hmm. which is what I had today. Picture a small ice cream bowl (laughs) or a small snack bowl. Put rice in there. How much rice? Like three spoonfuls? Three adult-sized spoonfuls. No. Five? No. Oh, no, I'm trying to think. Yeah, maybe seven. Okay, seven adult spoonfuls. It's like seven mouthfuls of rice. Like big spoonfuls. <laughs> Let's use Hannah mouthfuls as a, yeah. a benchmark here. Seven Hannah mouthfuls of rice, if I were to use a nice big spoon. Uh-huh. Some of the cheese, maybe two spoonfuls of the protein. Yeah. Right? Yes. Some sour cream, a little bit like a dollop. Yeah. A dollop of salsa. Mm-hmm. This is what Shane had for breakfast uh, yesterday, which is why he's <laughs> talking about his burrito in such detail. <laughs> yeah. So we have a little bowl, pretty full yes. of these ingredients. All mixed together. And how much do I generally eat of that? Most of it. Most Recently, of most, it. like almost all of it. Yeah. Sometimes all of it. Sometimes you'll leave a little, especially if there's like a stray tomato. You'll be like, Mm-mm, not eating that or a stray onion. I have this quirk. Maybe it's not a quirk, but I prefer perfect bites of food. Mm. That's normal, I know. But I get anxious about it. Oh my God. So I purposely have Hannah give me more food than I know I will eat. Yes. So that I have the best selection. Yeah, you're weird about for it. For every bite. Yeah. Like I can leave the undesirable bites yes. and not eat them. Yep, that's you. So that's breakfast. Then for lunch. If we eat lunch. We don't normally eat. Like it's just <laughs> our meals are kind of our... Are a little weird. Normally, we have a late breakfast, maybe at 11, 10 30, 11. Yeah. And then we'll have an early dinner that yeah. is like another big meal. And then we'll have snacks. I will say that, like, and let's say I eat a breakfast like I just described, it would not be uncommon around like two or three for me to have a bowl of chips. Two, yeah. Like maybe 15 chips and <laughs> like, or like two rich hackers dipped in hummus yeah or like one block of cheese yeah like a how big is that like a little square you know those like bite-sized cheese right. things that we have but it's Target. probably more common that i don't really eat again until dinner yeah no you do normally have a snack but we yeah. don't normally make like sandwiches or like we just eat like pita and hummus or like yeah yeah exactly or for me more leftovers yeah. I'll be like, oh, can you warm up some of my noodles from Wait, last for night? lunch? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, sometimes. Here and there. And then dinner is, I don't know, what, what dinner are you going to, like Let's pasta? pretend I'm having spaghetti and meatballs. Well, the thing is, it's always the same size bowl. So just take that ice cream bowl from the morning <laughs> and then put the dinner amount in it. And that's, and then I'll chop up the pasta and the meatball mm-hmm. into like small bites. I eat it more for dinner yeah. than I do for breakfast though. Yeah. So if there were seven spoonfuls, now there are 10. Yeah, and maybe I, 15. Or 15. <laughs> After dinner, I generally have a beer. Yeah. You know, just that is sustenance. Yeah. Even though it's not good sustenance. Mm-hmm. Water hasn't come up yet. I don't drink a lot of water. You only drink water at night right before bed. We're getting to that. We're getting to that. (laughs) So then after dinner at like, you know, eight or nine, we'll have a snack again. And this is what's like kind of different now. Yes. I used to not eat again until right before bed. I have a milkshake that we'll get to. Yeah. Um, But now I've been having snacks at night. And what do I have for snack? What do you have for snack? Uh, Pretzels, which is surprising. I feel like people will be like, what the heck? But Shane will have like, like the small pretzel sticks, we'll have like 20 of those. We know how many because I always like count. Those counts. That's the only item I know like how many you'll have. You'll try to get to 30. <laughs> I try to get to 30. I usually get like kind of tired of it around 25. Yeah. Or you'll recently we've been having fudge, of course. <laughs> yeah. The fudge has been great. Like three or four big fortfuls. Yeah. Although small for Hannah. So like big for me is yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Love fudge. I do love fudge. Then that's normally like what you eat for for snack. It's usually just pretzels. I will say sometimes during the snack phase, mm-hmm. I will have a cup of um, bubbly, like flavored water. water. Yeah, that's true. Here and there, not often. You know, I, I don't get excited. I have a mango one with us. I just realized a mango bubbly. Yeah, I got a mango bubbly. I didn't know they made that flavor. I know that's why. I just wanted to let you know that I got it. Ooh, I'm excited to try it. Did you bring my um, sour peach? No. 
Oh my god! I, what, how was I supposed to pack that on the road? We have to get back. <laughs> Shane bought a sour. What are they called? Sour warheads. Warheads. A uh, peach soda, sour peach soda. When we were in Wisconsin, and, and never drank it. Obviously, and I said you're not going to drink this. I guess thought <laughs> that I would pack it to bring to LA with us. I thought that I was like top of the list. It wasn't actually. It wasn't top of the list. So no, it's at home. It'll be there when we go back. Uh, and then, yeah, then Shane has at bedtime, maybe 11, a protein shake, a high calorie protein shake. Uh, and that's really where I get most of my nutrients. Yeah. It's like packed with every vitamin, every vitamin, every nutrient you should need. Yeah. Um, and it is 560 calories. Yeah. So like probably the biggest meal yep. that I eat. And and then you have a cup of water after. And then one so cup of water. That's how you survive. That cup of water, your body is like, thank God, <laughs> some water. Um, so that's what I did in the day. And I didn't like, just like thinking about it and laying it all out like that. I really don't eat a lot. No, of course you don't. I get full very easily. But you do eat off. Like we try to eat often. Right. Because you do get full quickly, but then your metabolism is very high. <laughs> that bothers and Hannah. Shane is hungry so quickly. <laughs> like we'll be out doing an activity for a day. Yeah. And we'll have like a lunch out of the restaurant. Yeah. And I will eat until I'm full. Hannah will eat until she's full. Yeah. And then by like 3 p.m., I'm like, You're like an hour ready later. to get another restaurant lined up. Yeah. And Hannah's like, what? We're not eating again. No, you're going to have to pack a snack. I'm not. We can't go to like six restaurants a day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what she eats in the day. Hopefully that was interesting for you. Uh, what do you eat in the day? We're not doing that. Let us know what your favorite oh, I foods you are. Were asking me to start going through mine. Oh, no, I was no. like, Shane, we've been talking for so long about this. <laughs> I was talking to our audience. Yeah. What are your favorite foods? What are your favorite foods? <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break and we'll be right back. I kid you not, I am actively wearing a pair of the softest Skims socks, and they are making my feet feel like delicious little treats. I know I got you those. I knew you'd love them. I love them so much. I knew you would. But enough about Shane's socks. I'm here to tell you about the Fits Everybody collection by Skims. So soft, so stretchy, so comfortable. I am obsessed. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for every body. My personal favorite is the t-shirt bra, but you really can't go wrong with any item in this collection. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body, and the buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. It's available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. The socks also feel buttery as well, I would just like to oh, add. Okay, thanks, Shane. You can believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. All right, we're back and it's time for Am I the Asshole? I love this game. Are you ready for me to read the story? Placing blame on others. It's a little bit long. Yeah, okay. but it's interesting. My friend and her two-year-old son came to visit me last week. She's a single mom and we rarely see each other because we live far apart. I just moved into a bigger apartment, so they came to stay with me for a few days. Everything was fine at first. We had fun. And although I'm not good with kids, I tried my best. One morning we were all in the kitchen. My friend and I made breakfast while the boy was playing with a toy on the floor. After a while, my friend left the room to take a call and was gone for a few minutes. I'm not used to having kids around, so I didn't think twice about leaving him alone when I left to go pee. My friend was just in the next room. The door was open, too. I also had to walk through the living room to get to the bathroom, so she knew I was leaving him alone in there. When I came back, she was still on the phone explaining something to her coworker, and the kid was still in the kitchen. But when she came back, she noticed a bunch of photos on the floor. I had put them on my fridge with small neodymium. Neodium? Yeah, I don't know. It's I've a type never, of magnet. magnets. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen that word in my life. Or it's a type of. Who knows? Neodymium looks right. Okay. So we started looking for those but didn't find any. Knowing how dangerous magnets can be for kids, we immediately tried to find out if he ate any, but he just started crying. So I drove us to an ER. My friend was panicking in the car and started yelling at me, why do you even have tiny magnets in the first place? You should have told me about it before. Why did you leave him all alone? I was driving and tried to focus, so I didn't answer her. Honestly, I just never thought about my fridge magnets being a hazard. All was fine in the end. He ate one magnet, but it wasn't a big deal as there wasn't any other ones. 
I was relieved and said, let's go home. I'll take down the other magnets and see what else I might have to baby proof for the next few days. But my friend was still furious with me and demanded I drop them off at a hotel and bring her things because who knows what chemicals I have lying around in child's reach. She can't take her eyes off him for a minute in that house or a second in that house. I tried to calm her down and reassure her that nothing else was going to happen and I'd keep a closer eye, but she refused. She just kept yelling at me. I dropped her off at a hotel and haven't heard from her since. Until this morning, she called and said that she's disappointed that I didn't even apologize for putting her child in danger, that I don't care about his well-being because I don't like children, and then parentheses, I don't, but I don't want him to die, obviously, (laughs) and that I was clearly not even worried when it happened. I don't mind apologizing, but am I really the only one to blame here? I have never had kids around, and while I did remember to put detergent and cleaning supplies out of reach, I just didn't think about the magnets. I could have done more and maybe shouldn't have left him alone in the room, but she has done it too, and I just didn't consider it. All right. All right. What is your first reaction? My reaction? Yes. Uh, it's the parent's responsibility. Ooh. 100%. Interesting take. I mean, that's, I, I, I can't even, uh-huh. like, I can't even imagine being like, you should have baby proofed your house. Like, I, I mean. Especially, I agree with you. And especially when she already did make an effort yeah. to baby proof. Like, she put away detergent that she knew would be unsafe. Yeah. But if you're not a parent, like I wouldn't expect someone to know every single thing that they should move. I think that's a a parent's responsibility to make sure that they're leaving their child in an area that is safe. Yeah. And to expect the person to stay there and watch the kid while you're on the phone without like specifically saying that I think is weird. Yeah. I think that actually the mom in this case is kind of being the asshole. Yeah. You know, she, she expects her friend to like, change her life all around yeah because they're visiting and, and to have all that knowledge you know? yeah like you can't blame someone for not knowing about your like about having children if they don't have them i did try to put myself in the shoes of the mother mm-hmm. and like if we had a baby and we took it somewhere yeah um and our friend had left out marbles yeah on the on the table yeah and the baby ate well, I, unknown amount yeah and we were like terrified yeah i think we would be annoyed with the friend initially like i don't think we're not the type of people to yell so yeah we wouldn't yell at them but i think we would definitely harbor some resentment resentment for a period of time yeah before we were able to be like okay not your fault we should have been well i think that's that would 100 percent be my first reaction because i don't want like no one wants to blame themselves it's much easier to be like you should have cleaned up the house before i arrived yeah but like you know when you really think about it it is kind of your responsibility to make sure your child is not in danger do you think that the the friend even owes the mom an apology i mean i think it's nice to make the mom feel better but i don't think that they owe an apology now i don't think so we agree wow we agree but you guys agree on things Nice for us. We don't have to fight today. I know. People got a little mad at our fighting last time. They were mad? Not mad, but they were like, oh, wow, they're actually like <laughs> having a disagreement here. <laughs> yeah, I'm very passionate about my beliefs. I think it's funny when like we're making something like that and we're both joking around. Yeah. And people think that we're actually, actually mad, mad at each other. I know. That's just how we, we're very kind yeah. of mean to each other in a loving way. Yeah. We're okay to be like, you're wrong. Yeah, you know we're not like oh I really respect like, your opinion and I'd love, I'd love to hear more about it. No, no we're like you have never had a good thought <laughs> in your entire life. <laughs> All right, well let us know what you think about this uh, situation in the comments. Yeah, have, are any of you that are parents have you ever like had this happen and yeah. did you get mad yeah, at are your we friends? Wrong? Are we wrong? Or are you the assholes? All right, we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with some fun. Would you rather? All right, we're back. We're going to jump right into the first would you rather. Where did you find these? Just like online? I found them at the library, actually. Oh I God. went and I picked out a book called The Big Book of Would You Rather. It was abbreviated, so it was actually called T B B O W Y R 2024. Wow edition oh. it came out one year early <laughs> that's amazing and i forgot to return it oh my god so we're being charged would you rather have a child who's the smartest kid in the world 
or a child who's the most popular kid in the world? I Oh, I should say, these were Would You Rather's for couples. Oh. So they're all kind of couple. The book was a it was relationship. D- it was D- really, D- uh, D- oh. it, it was a <laughs> relationship like, edition. Oh, I forgot. But Barnacle, Barnacle, and Bigsby. Oh my God. They're the. What's your response to the first Would You Rather? Prominent makers Shane. of this book. Uh, obviously, the smartest. Really? Oh, yeah. I go with most popular. Oh my God. I don't want, I don't think it would be fun to be the smartest person in the world. I, I only, that sounds awful. I only put this one because I thought we would both be like, haha, smartest, definitely. Oh. To have all that burden on your shoulders? Mm-mm. <laughs> no thanks. No, but if they're that smart, they'll just like be able to be smart enough to know how to handle it. No, I think that being that smart would be depressing. Popular though? I don't know. I, mean, I just I thought them. that's pleasant, being smart. The what? smartest person in the world. Yeah. Mm. Imagine if our kid was the smartest kid in the world. It sounds like it would be an awful life. For the kid or for yeah, us? For the kid. What about most popular? That would be like a lot of social stress. Yeah, maybe. And pressure. Maybe. I wasn't thinking famous. I was just thinking like well-liked. No, it's most popular ever. Oh, most popular? Oh. I don't know. I guess maybe smartest. I don't know. Smartest is just weird to me. But you do value intelligence over popularity. I do. Which is but why I thought you would say. in the world sounds like a negative thing. They Like very could alienating. solve our world's problems. Or they couldn't because everyone else is dumb and not <laughs> able to work with them. It just sounds like it would be frustrating. It feels like they would be directing us when they were like three years old and we yeah. would be very annoyed at them. Probably. Most popular. Okay. Give us a dummy. <laughs> Give us a dummy. Oh my God. Would you rather go through life unable to forget anything ever or go through life unable to remember anything? Ob- obviously unable to forget. <laughs> <laughs> Although, but if you went through some really bad stuff that you wanted well, to forget. Well, there are things I would love to forget, but I would still, I wouldn't trade <laughs> never having any memories. I feel like the way that I normally operate is kind of never able to remember anything. So that wouldn't be that different for me. No. <laughs> no. Imagine you can't remember who your parents are. Yeah, no. That, I don't and wanna... they text you and you're like, who is this? <laughs> even the bad stuff in life, though. Like, for me, though, I feel like even the most horrific things that I've been through, mm-hmm. I still want to remember them. Yeah. Like, they help you grow and get better. Yeah. Wow, that was deep and profound. So deep of you. Would you rather date someone who's always punctual or date someone who remembers everything? Mm-hmm. What? This is the same as the last. Like, it is very memory oriented. Feels like they copy and pasted the last part. But always you, punctual or remembers. How Wait, do you feel about punctual? I just don't get it. Date someone who's always punctual or date someone who remembers everything? I didn't Wouldn't make the that question. Wouldn't that person also be punctual? Oh. You know, you've, you've solved I'm just it. just confused. As, like, those don't seem like opposing things. Like, I don't know either. We need a Skinner noise. For the segment of our podcast where Hannah corrects the <laughs> the prompt that the we are working with, of it, I just think that's very confusing. I guess I'd rather date someone who's always punctual because remembers everything is a little creepy. You just said you want to be able to remember everything. Yeah, versus unable to forget anything. So you want to be able to remember everything, but you don't no, want your partner I don't want to. to be able to remember it's everything. It's the lesser of two evils, and I don't hmm. I don't know why I would pick. Someone who remembers everything over someone who's always punctual. But don't you think that my punctuality annoys you a lot? No. Really? No. You do not like how early I like to be at places. That's not punctual. That's like freakish. (laughs) Punctuality I have no problem with. We get places three hours early. That's not punctual. That's just weird. What's your answer? Uh, I would rather date someone who... Is punctual because yes. I like being on time. I know you do. We all know that. And if it, it's kind of like you, it never forgets anything. You remember like something me and I said 10 years ago. Yeah. And you bring it up when I'm at my worst. Oh my God. All right. Next one. Would you rather be infamous in history books or be forgotten after your death? <laughs> so like remembered for a bad reason. Yeah. Forgotten. Or forgotten. Forgotten. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's kind of eventually forgotten. Yeah. And on that note, have a great week, everyone. (laughs) We're not done yet. Two more. 
<laughs> would you rather have a life changing adventure or be able to stop time? This one is challenging. Uh, stop time. Yeah, that one feels a little bit. Why better. would I pick one adventure? <laughs> You're right. As I said that, I was like, no, this is easy. <laughs> Stop in time. Like, I'd rather have the superpower than go on a trip <laughs> one time. It's a life changing trip, though, Hannah. I don't know. You're going to Italy. <laughs> I'm picking stop time. Or you should stop time forever. Yeah, let's pick that one. Being able to stop time would be so cool. I know. I should be so early to everything. Oh my God. Oh no, there's traffic. Snap, pause, get there, unsnap. Wow. Look at that. We're I early. love how that's how you would choose to use your power to stop time. <laughs> Would you rather travel a lot or meet a lot of people? That's hilarious to me. Oh my, your answer. Because one is positive and one is horribly negative. <laughs> like objectively, it handles mine. But yeah, I would rather travel a lot and I would rather never meet a lot of people. I like meeting people, but not very much. I like traveling <laughs> a lot more. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. That wow. was the last one. We're like meant to be. We are. I think we have almost the same answer That's nice. for all of those cute of us we should get married <laughs> all right everyone we hope you enjoyed our episode uh even though it was kind of thrown together in a strange place it's all good that's what Dread Air mayhem is all about yeah it's about bringing together oh here we go creativity passion art inspiration love oh. disability okay and junk junk and if you enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, give us a review, all of that stuff. And it's a junkyard out there. And this junkyard is not the most popular junkyard in the world, but it is the most smart, <laughs> the smartest. The most smartest? Junkyard in the world. Wow. Read our Yelp reviews. We are very smart here. Bye. Bye. <laughs>